Stephen Jay Gould, in the late 90s, had a good idea, or so he thought. He came up with a notion that he gave the acronym NOMA, and that stands for Non-Overlapping Magisteria. The idea behind it is simple. It's the idea that there are areas of authority, areas of knowledge, over which either religion on the one hand, or science on the other hand, would hold dominion. On what some areas of knowledge, the scientists would be the authoritative voices. To know what's going on, you would have to refer to scientists. On the other areas, religious would be um, the, author the authoritative voices. And, as the name suggests, non-overlapping magisteria, the idea behind it is that they are like two separated turfs upon which one crowd of people, or the other, holds dominion, and into which people from the other side should not stray. Now that this is the case, on the one hand, with religious people straying into the scientific turf, is patently obvious. You only need to look at creationists to see what I mean. When a religious person strays onto the scientific turf and starts making authoritative statements, they invariably come out sounding, sorry to have to say this, like idiots. But the other way around is not so certain. And in actual fact, it is shown time and time again that when science starts investigating areas of knowledge, areas of what it's like to be human, that previously were thought to be under the religious domain, time and time again science shows us that it can actually make valuable contributions to those areas and attain a level of authority. A good example of this is morality, for example. Science has started looking into things like, for example, game theory, which might sound a bit funny in the context of morality, but it has been shown, time and time again, to be able to explain how sophisticated morals can develop from fairly basic foundations, and foundations that we can validly assume to be true in the real world. For example, how on the basis of the so-called selfish behavior of our genes, compelling us to procreate, strong moral behavior could actually evolve. That's just one example. So, what's going on here? Well, if you think about how NOMA was originally defined, it does sound to me suspiciously like the God of the Gaps argument. It's very similar. It would be looking at areas of expertise upon on which science could make valid authoritative statements, and then look at what falls outside that, and then declare that as science can't say anything valid over that, about it, that it is the domain of religion. And of course, that is why this problem occurs. That is why NOMA is invalidated, because science is, by its very nature, the sort of discipline that will expand beyond its current limits and enter areas into which it previously hadn't gone. Where does that leave religion? Well, I wouldn't say religion is completely useless. However, in many, many ways it is. I'll make no bones about that. In many different ways, many different types of religion are completely pointless and useless. 
How do you recognize such religious religions? Fairly easily. Just look for religions that make any sort of factual statement. The moment a religion makes a factual statement of any kind, whether it's like this is morally correct, morally right, and that's morally wrong, up to the earth is 6,000 years old, any sort of factual statement made in a religious context is by definition, if not wrong, then highly suspect. So where does that leave religion? Well, as an area of knowledge, I'm afraid it leaves religion nowhere. Religion is not a discipline for attaining knowledge. It must, if it wants to survive, find another use, another reason for being. And this is what I think religion can come into its own for. As science has progressed, we have established that there are certain areas, certain limits of knowledge that are in fact absolute. They are imposed by the nature of what knowledge is. A very good example of this is what Gödel found out in Gödel's theorem. It basically boils down to something like this, right? Now I'm paraphrasing and this is a little bit woolly, okay? But this is what it boils down to. If you are a conscious entity, for example, if you are a, an entity that is internally consistent, insofar as knowledge about itself is concerned, that is self-reflective. You can look at yourself and describe yourself to yourself. And your ideas about yourself are internally consistent. Then it is impossible for you to have complete knowledge about yourself. That is a very interesting statement. In very technical terms, it boils down to that system set of self, descriptive and internally consistent, can never completely describe themselves. In other words, you cannot in that system derive, simply through the system itself, all the statements that would be true within the context of that system. That is the very technical description of it. But for conscious entities like, like ourselves, it can be summarized a bit more simply by saying, we will always be mysteries unto ourselves. That is true for us as human beings, as well for, as for the universe as a whole, insofar that we can accumulate, accumulate knowledge within the universe about the universe. It can never be complete. So there will always be an area of mystery there. Now religion cannot fill the gap in the sense that it can make quasi-authoritative statements about those areas of mystery. They cannot say this is true or that is false because those sort of statements are within the remit of science. And science, as we have seen, is much better equipped to deal with such questions. But what religion can be good for is as a mechanism to cope with this mystery. To cope with the fact that our knowledge can never be absolute. To cope with the fact that there will always be mystery to us. And to deal with that and to make our life more complete for knowing it. If a religion can serve us that can do that for human beings, then I think that is a religion that is useful to us, that has a place in our future. I'm afraid many of today's religions do not fit that bill.